If you're thinking about creating and selling online courses, your online course platform is one of the most important tools you'll need. But there are quite a few options out there and a lot of them are very different from each other. So today I'm gonna talk about my favorite online course creation platforms and help you choose which one is right for you. Hey, I'm Melissa and welcome back to Wit & Wire where we help creators turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. One of the most important distinctions we have to start with is the difference between a course marketplace and a course creation platform. On the marketplace side, we have sites like Skillshare, Udemy, and Coursera. So the way it works is that students actually go to those websites to find courses and can purchase a course and take it on that website. As a creator, what you would be doing is almost like contributing a course to Udemy or to Skillshare. And I have a fairly successful Skillshare course with a few thousand students, and that course is great for exposure. It's put me in front of a lot of people, but I don't earn very much money from that course at all. The biggest downside, in fact, to course marketplaces is the fact that it really puts a cap on your profitability. So of those nearly 6,000 students, I earn like a hundred to $200 per month at max. And some of that money comes from me referring people to Skillshare. For Udemy, you may earn a little bit of money per course, but Udemy controls your course pricing and they can discount it at any time. On top of that, for any of those course marketplaces, ultimately you're building up that company's business and you don't have access to the customers. So those students are Skillshare students. They are Udemy students and you cannot market to them. You do not have their email addresses. And as a business owner, I think that is a huge downside. On the other hand, if you've heard of Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi, or Podia, these are online course creation platforms. And when you use one of these tools, you are creating an online course but then when a student makes a purchase, they are paying you directly. The way I usually describe it is that you can use a tool like WordPress or Squarespace to build a website, but you don't go to squarespace.com to see other people's websites. In that same way, you don't go to teachable.com to explore a marketplace of courses. Instead, somebody may find my course because they discover Wit & Wire and then they go to my website, they see that I have a course, they make a purchase from me, and then they're going through that course that I happened to build using Teachable. Overall, the course creation platform is a white label solution that lets you create your own product. And to me, that's the big difference. Is it your product or does it belong to a marketplace? Technically, if you upload content to one of those sites like Udemy, Skillshare, or Coursera, you still own your own content. But for the sake of our discussion, I almost always recommend using the online course creation platforms, and those are the tools we're gonna to be focusing on because they are much more profitable for business owners. The first platform is Teachable. Full disclosure, I used to work at Teachable full-time for four years, but I wouldn't have worked there if I didn't believe in the product, and I was actually a Teachable user before I was a Teachable employee. So here are a few reasons why I love Teachable. First, it's super customizable. You can create any type of experience inside each individual lesson. So for example, you can add a video and then put text below it with your recommended resources, or you can list an action item. Now, obvious as that sounds, not all course creation platforms do that. There are other options where you can only have a video or only have a download per lesson. And I think that makes for a worse student experience because sometimes you need more than a video to really accomplish the goal of one lesson. I also love the flexibility of the curriculum builder. This is where I spend most of my time as a creator either building courses or updating or adding curriculum. So the fact that you can easily publish or unpublish lessons as you're working on them, you can make certain parts downloadable, you can customize what goes into the lessons, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with embedding forms to create pulse checks. I just think there's so much that you can do with Teachable because of the flexibility that it offers. I also think that the student experience is nice, it's easy to go through, and it makes for a clean, easy to follow experience. Another area where Teachable really shines is the checkout. You can add benefits, testimonials, and a guarantee along the side, and all of those increase the conversion potential of your checkout page. It's also a single page checkout experience. I'll talk about a two-step checkout for some of the other tools, but basically what this means is that there is no step one, create a login, and then step two, check out. And the more steps you have, the more chances that you have for students to say no and to decide not to buy from you. 
So overall, Teachable's done a lot of work to optimize this checkout process to increase your odds of making the sale. There are also tons of integrations and Zap options in Zapier, so you can make anything possible between Teachable and most tools that you're probably using for your business. I also forgot to mention that when you're creating curriculum, you can use a cloud importer. So if your videos are in Dropbox or Google Drive, you can connect to it directly instead of downloading videos and then uploading them, which I think is really nice and not something most of the platforms use. Now, no tool is perfect and Teachable is no exception. This is not a flaw, but I think an important consideration when it comes to pricing, Teachable is comparable to the others on this list. It's not more expensive or less expensive, and they do have a free plan to get you started. But I do think it's noteworthy that on the free and basic plans, there is a small transaction fee. So at a certain point, when you start to sell a couple thousand dollars in course sales per year, which I know you will, then you may wanna upgrade to the pro plan to avoid those fees. But when you're just getting started, overall, they don't add up to too much, where I think that those are still the right options. And honestly, I recommend the basic plan for most Teachable creators until you start to scale. The other area of improvement for Teachable are the sales pages. So I'm talking about the sales page for your own course. They have definitely improved the editor over the last few years, but what I actually do instead is I use my WordPress site and I build my sales pages there. And then on the button on those pages, when you click it, you go to a Teachable checkout page or another checkout. So you don't need a fancy integration to do that. I just wanted to share that that is the tech stack that I recommend for creators, whether it's a WordPress site, a Squarespace site, whatever you used to build your website, you can use that to build your sales pages. One more thing about Teachable that's really noteworthy is the fact that they automatically calculate EU VAT tax and they can pay out affiliates if you turn on a feature called back office. Teachable has done a lot to really create a comprehensive checkout experience and to handle a lot of the finances for you on the admin side. So Teachable is definitely the clear winner when it comes to checkout and conversion optimization on the front end for your buyers. Platform number two is Thinkific. Teachable and Thinkific are very similar. And even though I use and love Teachable, I know a lot of people are very happy with Thinkific and it could absolutely be right for you. I will say that their checkout, I think pales in comparison to Teachable because they have a two-step checkout. Students have to create a login first, then they go to a second page where they can check out and that adds friction in the buying process, which will lower your conversion rate. I also personally prefer the student experience of a Teachable course because I've been students in courses on all of these platforms, but that's just a minor preference. Thinkific has a free plan if you wanna check it out, and they do have a cap of three courses on that free plan, but it should be enough for you to see what you think. I will say that one area where Thinkific does shine is their ability to collect assignments and there are slightly more enhanced grading and quizzing features compared to Teachable. So if that's important to you, then Thinkific could be the right choice. Overall though, with both platforms, but definitely with Teachable, you can embed a lot of other tools into your lessons. So I just want you to know that even if there's not a native option in Teachable, Thinkific, or the tool that you choose, there are a lot of external tools like surveys that you can embed that will still create what looks like a native experience for your students. That's a bit of an intermediate tip. If you know what that means, that's for you. And if not, don't even worry about it. Platform number three is Podia. Podia markets themselves as your all-in-one digital storefront. And although I think it could be the right fit if your primary goal is simplicity, the other side of simple means that you can't customize as much and it's not quite as functional. For example, to me, one of the biggest drawbacks is the fact that you can only have one content type per lesson. So let's say that you had a video, but you also wanted a PDF to go with that video. You have to make those two separate lessons. And not only is that confusing because now your student has to know to go to two different places, it also runs the risk of making your course appear much longer than it needs to be. As an example, in my podcasting course, I have a lesson on creating a podcast intro for your show. And below it, I have a PDF downloadable of a lot of example scripts. So I would have to split that into two lessons. And if I had to do that every single time, I wanted to have a video with a resource, my course would have many more lessons than it already does. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Also, Podia has kind of a pop-up checkout process where it's two-step like Thinkific, 
first you enter an email and then you enter your credit card info. But there's no room for things like testimonials, guarantees, or benefits. And I think that the pop-up nature is not optimized for conversion. I don't have proof. What I do know for sure is that every marketing study I've ever seen shows that a single page checkout experience will outconvert a two-step process just because the more pages there are, the more chances there are for people to fall out. Platform number four is Kajabi. Kajabi is a really popular choice for course creators and business owners because they are an all-in-one solution. Kajabi is a little bit different from the first three tools on the list. I would say that Teachable, Thinkific, and Podia are course creation platforms. Sure, you can also sell memberships and other types of digital products, but for the most part, that is the purpose. You are selling digital products. Kajabi expands that a little bit. It is an all-in-one tool where you can create your website, you can sell courses, you can have a blog, you can have a podcast RSS feed, you can send emails, you can create pipelines. There's so much that you can do in Kajabi. And I think Kajabi is the right fit for someone who values simplicity and having one tool over the ability to customize because its greatest strength, the fact that it's an all-in-one tool is also its biggest downfall. Because if you're like me, let's say, you may want to do more advanced email automations and Kajabi can't do things like that. So it wouldn't be the right tool for me, but I definitely think Kajabi could be the right fit for somebody who wants everything in one place. I also know that Kajabi's sales pages and website builder cannot really be compared to the first three options. They are definitely more customizable. You can do a ton with them. So I think if you're looking for an all-in-one solution, Kajabi could be a great fit for you. Once again, though, I have to talk about the student experience. I still think that the Kajabi interface, which shows a video with a little bit of text below, but then shows downloads off on the side, is not as user-friendly as Teachables, where you create a series of blocks and you can do whatever you'd like, but it's very linear. I know that's just my personal preference talking, but as a student, I prefer taking courses in Teachable than I do taking courses in Kajabi. Also, the price point is frankly higher. It's gonna start at $149 a month and go up from there. So if you're choosing Kajabi, I would just make sure that you're using not only the course creation capabilities, but that you're also interested in some of the other tools to have an all-in-one home for your business. Platform number five is Learn Worlds. I'll be honest, this is the platform on my list that I'm least familiar with, but I'm mentioning it because on one of their higher tiers, they have interactive video functionality. Students can highlight text in their own version of the course. And I think if interaction is what's most important to you, then this could be a really interesting option for you to explore. If those are not some of your top criteria, then I think the first options on this list are gonna be a little bit more affordable. But overall, I'm super fascinated by Learn World and excited to see how people might continue to use it in the coming years. Platform number six is Member Vault. I think a lot of people choose Member Vault because they have a pretty robust free plan. And I do think that it's a budget-friendly option. I still prefer Teachable's free plan, but I think where Member Vault does shine is their gamification where you can earn points as you complete different lessons. And they really like to talk about the fact that you can have multiple courses and send people to the hub where they can see all these sales pages and they can click in and they can make a purchase. But the reason why I'm not sold on that idea is because the Member Vault sales pages and checkout experience does not seem optimized for conversion to me. So even if I were using Member Vault, I would probably still be using my WordPress sales pages. So overall, I'm not the biggest fan of the Member Vault experience, either as a creator, I think it's a lot more technical than the other options, or as a student, I find myself getting lost in the experience. But if you're looking for a budget option, I did want to include it on the list where you can choose this or check out Teachable and Thinkific's free plans, but mostly Teachable. I mean, you all knew I was gonna recommend Teachable, right? Platform number seven is Thrivecart. This is a little bit of a left field recommendation because at the end of 2021, Thrivecart, which was formerly a checkout solution, announced that they had a new feature called Learn, where they were basically trying to compete with Teachable and all the other course creation platforms to say, look, we already know people are using our checkout experience. Let's just give the people what they want. And instead of integrating with Teachable, what if they had the option to use our own tool? Since it's new, I will say that Thrivecart's Learn feature is still in pretty early stages, but you can create a very simple course. And the thing that you need to know about creating with Thrivecart Learn is the fact that they do not have video hosting. Let's say you choose Teachable. What you can do is create your video, drag and drop it in, and then Teachable hosts that video for you online. With Thrivecart, that's not the case. You'll need to purchase a different tool like hosting your videos on Vimeo 
or on YouTube, which I don't recommend even if you unlist them because it's not private and can be shared. But let's say you did Vimeo or Loom, you still have to pay for a different video solution. So it's not the end of the world. That could run you anywhere from seven or $8 a month to $20 per month, but it's definitely a cost worth considering. That said, I do use and love Thrivecart as a checkout experience because now that my business has grown a little bit, there are some additional features that Teachable can't do, like the ability to have more than one payment plan on a single checkout page. So if you're interested in exploring Thrivecart, you can find a link below this video or visit witandwire.com slash Thrivecart. Before I share my final recommendations, I did want to give an honorable mention to the world of WordPress plugins. There are tools like MemberPress and LearnDash. You can use those to create courses that are actually part of your WordPress site. I think those work really well for a lot of business owners and you'll find links to both of those below. I personally find them to be a little bit more technically challenging than the course creation platforms. But if what's most important to you is keeping everything housed under your WordPress site, then I think then those could be a great solution for the right business owner. Overall, I do have an important tip about choosing your course creation platform. When you visit all of these websites, you're gonna see tons of features like graded quizzes, certificates, dripped content where new content unlocks every week, course compliance, there are so many features. The problem is if none of those features apply to your needs for your business, then making a buying decision based on those features is not gonna be useful. So what I would recommend doing right now is that you make a list of all the features that are important to you. What do you want your course experience to feel like? Make notes. And then once you have that list, you can go to the different websites, maybe do some free trials and you can see what feels right to you, but also what meets your needs. You do not need to pay for features just because they sound fancy. And I don't use a lot of the features that are on upper tiers in any of these platforms. That's my business owner tip for you. I also want to share that I think there are two very important parties when it comes to which tool you choose. The first is of course you. The way that the tool feels to you, if it's intuitive or not, if you enjoy using it, if it makes sense, obviously there may be a small learning curve to some of these course creation platforms, especially if you aren't very tech savvy, but you may have kind of like a gut feeling that some feel better to you than others. I think that's really important. The other important person is your student. The student experience feels very different in each of these platforms. So for you, a major consideration could be how that UX, that user experience feels to a student how the branding of it looks. I think that's a major criteria as well. And that's totally a personal option. One of you may prefer Thinkific, another Podia, another Teachable. That's not something that has a universal answer. And overall, one of the tips that I always give business owners is that there is no such thing as a perfect tool, just the right tools for different people. There are plenty of very happy customers on every single platform that I listed. So the worst mistake that you could make is not choosing any at all or letting paralysis prevent you from launching your online course. So if you are looking for all of the curriculum building tools that I use for my courses, you'll find my complete online course toolkit in the description below or at witandwire.com slash course toolkit. Otherwise, if this video has been helpful, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Wit and Wire for more online business tips. Since you're interested in online course creation, I would recommend this next video on how to create and sell your online course, even if you aren't very tech savvy and don't know where to find students. 